was starting to get a really good look at the shape of this boat. We just mocked it up with a few little temporary planks on the bottom here, but you can see that change in shape as it goes forward. So, you know, it's a shallower V back aft and a deeper V up forward. You know, and uh, you know, it's nothing really super special about the shape. It's kind of another V bottom, but I've always thought V bottoms are real pretty anyhow. So, you know, this one's as pretty as any of them. It's kind of long and slender and, and uh, <laughs> just plain pretty is what it is. But, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of the bevels cut on the ends of the plank in here. And uh, it's kind of a strange construction as well. I designed the structure of it myself and uh, you know, it's working out really well. So we've dubbed these bevels on here onto the sole plank and then on the chine and on the side plank. And, and uh, we had a little temporary setup right down the middle here. It's like a little keelson, a representation of the keelson right down the center. That allowed us to get these bevels exactly like that. Now, uh, maybe they're not exactly perfect. I might whittle a tiny bit off the top right up here once I put the real keelson in place. But, uh, you know, a tiny, tiny tune-up and uh, it'll come out just as nice as can be. So our next move is to uh, take uh, planking off of here, take down our center line right here, our temporary keelson, and we have behind us right here a piece of two by five and three eighths white oak that's going to make the keelson right down the middle of the boat. And we're going to mount that, we're going to mortise it right into the transom, and then we're going to cut a big long scarf up in here in the stem and mount it to the stem. So we'll actually temporarily set that up too, and then we're going to actually cut an angle on it on both sides, similar to this, and uh, rabbit it for the planking down both sides. We're probably going to do that right in place. So, you know, it'll be kind of interesting. I can't wait to get started. Now, before we go back aft and fit the keelson into the transom, I just wanted to show you this right here. This is just a little demonstration of the planking that's going to go on the bottom. It's going to be two layers of this. This is three-eighths of an inch thick, you know, white cedar, and it's edge grain, nice material. It's not going to be required to make a span from the chine log all the way to the keelson. Uh, right at this point, we have a temporary keelson in place right here because uh, that's how we generated these angles. But it's going to have a longitudinal halfway between, just like this. So it cuts that span down to, uh, you know, it's actually got a span from here to here and another span from there to there. Two layers with fiberglass in between and fiberglass over it. So it's going to be pretty stiff, the bottom. As light as it may appear, it's going to be pretty darn stiff. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is go back aft and fit this keelson in place. Well, now I'm at the transom here, and I'm looking at the slot that I've drawn on here to accept the keelson. Now, I've got a center line here, and I've worked it right off the center line. It's five and three-eighths of an inch wide, equal distance from the center line. And uh, it's going to be two inches thick, but and three quarters of an inch of it is going to be sticking up above the transom because the planking's going to come up and butt into it like that. It's going to have a piece about that wide sticking above this plane right here. Now, the next thing I need to do is draw a line on it because I'm just going to make a bunch of cuts in it with a handsaw and then chisel the pieces out with a chisel and maybe dress it up with a little uh, plane. But what I want to do is draw a line on here. Now, I have to be careful with this. If I put a square up here and put it like this, the line's going to be drawn kind of going outboard like that. That won't work. You have to put the top of the square exactly level or very close to level like that in order to get this line that I wanted to draw to parallel the center line. So that's what I've got. I've got the square on there properly. I'm just going to make a little line just like that. It's just a little reference line for me to sew alongside. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, but you can see when I get the square level on the top here, it's got a little space over here between the rule and where I'm trying to draw the line. So I'm going to have to sight right down through there and make sure my pencil is nice and vertical going down through there so I can draw the line like that. Now that came out right, just like that. The first thing I'm going to do today is cut a slot right down the middle of my brand new transom. 
I'm out to establish the very angle that I need to touch down the keelson into a slot in the transom. So I'm going to establish this slot in the middle first off. have the string. Now I've got a string down the center line and I'm just going to test the bottom of my slot here. Now I can see that the string is touching the inboard face of it before the outboard face so I'm going to tune that slot up a little bit deeper on the inboard side there and square it out a little bit before I'm really satisfied. Now I've put some blocking up on top of the boat there just to control the leading end of the saw because I don't want it flailing all over the place. I don't want it to get too deep is what I don't want so you know, I'm just going to use that to just control it. I'm not going to try to cut those blocks. Right now I'm kind of using the saw like a, like a rasp, really. And I'm going to rasp my way down to the bottom of that slot. Take a look at it. I'm going to do a little bit on my side. A little bit more. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to check the bottom of that slot with the string. And you can see that the string contacts both the inboard and the outboard side at the same time. That's what I was looking for right there. Now I'm going to take the string out and draw a level line across the inside. Now what I'm doing is making a series of cuts. And I want to be very careful that those cuts don't go past the line that I'm looking at. And I can't really lean over and see the line on the inside very easily at all. So I've put a few blocks up forward and I've got the tip of the saw just kind of gliding along those blocks. It's kind of like a crude setup there, but uh, you know, it does the trick. And uh, I'm using the heel end of the saw when I get very close to the line. You'll see me put the tip of the saw on the block and and then I'll hold the block and, and just use the heel of the saw to cut down close to the line, you know, and uh, I could probably duplicate what I'm doing here with the handsaw with maybe a sawzall, but when you get down near the line, you'd have to be awful careful. I, I, I just wouldn't want to take that chance. It's really not that much work to make this series of cuts right here, so this is the way to go about it right here. Also, uh, a circular saw of some sort coming in on the line, you know, from the after side, uh, that'd be a little bit dangerous, and there is an angle involved. I don't, I don't think that's the way to go, so this is the way we're doing it right here. This is the way I've always done it, and it's the way we're doing it today. Well, let's see if I cut past the line on the other side. I'm just going to clean it up there a little bit. No, I really didn't. That came out really nice right there, so... Now I'm going to use a mallet and chisel and I'm going to knock all those blocks out with a little narrow chisel actually, quite a bit narrower than most people would use, but uh, it's all I need and uh, it moves a lot easier than a big giant one, so I'll get all the blocks knocked off from one side and then uh, maybe I'll work it down to the line kind of closer, but then I'm going to turn around and come from the other side as well. Once I get that work down close to the line, I can just use that same chisel like a little slick and uh, slick at the blocks, you know, until I get right down to the bottom of the cuts. And uh, it's kind of important to uh, follow those cuts because they were, uh, they were controlled cuts. So that's, uh, that's where I'm going right there. That's my depth. 
those original saw cuts right there. And I'm going to get as close as I can get to them, but uh, I'll be taking a rabbit plane to it a little bit too and just smoothing it up with a rabbit plane because you've got different grains here. You know, there's like four or five layers of, of wood right here, and some of the grain is coming up at me and some of it's going down. So it's not the easiest thing to slick, nor is the end grain the easiest thing to slick with a little chisel like this either. But if it's sharp enough, you can get away with it. So. I'm kind of tapering the end uh, of the cut a little bit so that when I drop the keelson in there, it'll tighten up as it goes down a little tiny bit. Oh, that's good. That slot looks a little crude along the bottom right there, but we're going to be smoothing that up later on. As we fit the keelson in there, we might want to drop it down maybe a 32nd of an inch or just smooth it up until we can't see the light in between there or whatever we want to do. So it'll be a very nice fit when we're finished. Now I'm going to take my string and give it one little check in here. just in places just to see how the bottom of my slot is and oh, it's quite good so I'm all set there. I've been waiting to do this. To cut this long scarf in the heel end of the stem with my electric plane. You know, I'm making everything as easy as I can with this plane, like I said, and uh, this isn't going to be a real traditional connection between the keelson and the stem. What it's going to be is another long glue scarf, and it's going to be also fastened together. So basically, cutting the scarf is pretty simple, it's just a matter of checking it as you go along. And, uh, you know, don't have your plane set too deep. You could get kind of carried away with it if you're not careful. So, you know, I'm being very delicate with it and just making sure that I don't uh, go past where I'd like to go. And I've got a mock-up forward there. I don't know how many inches long it is or anything like that. All I know is it's as long as the piece of stock that I've got for the keels, and that's as long as I can make it right there. Just like that, just right, just like that. And that's that. Now I've planed the heel of the stem off on a long, long bevel like this, and uh, I think the idea of that is to just get as much glue surface as I can between the stem or the heel end of the stem and the keel itself. I'm not trying to make any kind of hook scarf or do anything special like that. The whole boat's got uh, plenty of fastenings in it. This will be fastened to there as well but I'm gonna glue it right on there and uh, so the next thing for me to do is just take the keel down I've drawn a line alongside of it so I have to scoff that end of the keel and then I'll get it right up on top here and fit it a little bit play with it a little tiny bit and then uh, fasten it in place. Now I'm continuing that tracement right around the forward end of the keelson right around the forward end down the other side all the way back to the original spot where I started and the idea is to have a line all the way around it so that when I start planing, you know, I'll know exactly where I'm headed. And the electric plane is the way to go here again because I don't have to transport this thing over. I don't have to use any big giant electric equipment or anything to make a scarf like this. I just pick up the plane. I'm right there at the boat and I just knock it down with the electric plane. It's as fast as anything. It's easy. You know, I can approach the line. And, you know, the way the joinery is done, it's very forgiving. You know, I can tune it up later, I can change it a little bit, I can slide the keelson forwards or backwards or do anything I want to it as I put it together up here. But uh, basically, I'm, I'm getting the rudimentary angle down pat before I fit it up in place and take a look at it. All right. All right, Caleb, once you knock that right down in place there with the mallet, That looks, that looks good. That looks good. Well, we've got our keelson in place right now. We've made a scoff on the heel end of the stem and a scoff on the forward end of the keelson. And uh, that's just going to be glued together. 
one of the next things for us to do is to get a, a line on it that establishes this centerpiece right here and then we're going to scarf this off. We're going to uh, plane this off to match to this angle right here all the way down and it's a progression too. Uh, the only thing is a little bit different because we're going to have this up like three quarters of an inch a little uh, too high when we first start. I'm just going to get the bevel on it and then I'm going to cut a rabbit on it after the bevel. Now, you know, I don't know any of the angles. I haven't checked it on drawings or done anything like that. Basically what it is, is just developing the bevels that you need to develop as you go along and dubbing them in place. It's a very easy thing to do. It's probably the easiest way to do things like this and uh, you know, so it's working out for us really, really nicely now. We're going to go back after get started on that. Uh, we're making a, a, a gauge that we can use to bevel this off properly, draw a few lines and get going.